Okay team, in this short and crisp uh, video, I am going to tell you about what is common criteria and uh, uh, it is testable in the CISSP exam. So you should know it. Uh, from last few uh, months, I am seeing uh, that this topic is not very much tested in the exam, but you should always be prepared for it. So let's not uh, take it as granted and let's go and talk about this particular topic. So what is common criteria? When you have a product and you want to sell it, let's say, it is always advisable that you get it uh, certified by a third party, right? Because end of the day, you will get more trust if a third party actually uh, test your particular product and then give you a accreditation on top of it, right? So normally that is how companies also do. Uh, we go with ISO 27001 certification and then the certification body give us the accreditation, accreditation, right? Same way, when there are products, they need to go with common criteria. Common criteria is an ISO standard, ISO IC 15408. And once your product is certified by them, then you can confidently say it will also be listed. Your product will also be listed on common criteria website that this particular product is uh, kind of, uh, uh, you know, um, is certified. However, there is a catch. Let's say I have a big system which contains, let's say, 10 different modules. What people do uh, normally, they go and get this product tested, let's say, because this is the most critical one. They will take a common criteria certification for this particular module. And what they will advertise then on their website saying our entire product is kind of certified. There's a common business trick which you will see all the time. But you as a security guy has to be very careful. Uh, you should be seeing the entire scope and the documentation before you go and you know, just because somebody is common criteria certified, the product is good. It doesn't mean that. Okay. Whenever we go with common criteria, you know, com in common criteria, uh, you know, how does it happen? There are different businesses across the world in different locations. These businesses are interested to actually become business, uh, do business on the lab part. So they, they want to become labs, uh, right, for product uh, testing and all. So what they do, they go and implement ISO 15408. And based on that, they will made, make your system and they will get audited and everything. So now in your location, in your area, let's say you are here in India, let's say in Bangalore and there is a lab which is ISO 15,408 certified. So you, what you will do, you will reach out to them and give your product for testing. They will do the certification and then from the central common criteria, you know, as a central agency, they are going to release you a particular certification and that particular certification will then be hosted on common criteria website. You can go and check this website. It's very nice website. You can go through, right? So your product will be listed out there. Now, how does it happen? This all happens and how 50, uh, ISO 15408 get applied. So they have something called as evaluation criteria. That means a set of requirement. Criteria is a set of requirements which you need to apply to get your product tested against a particular standard. So they have EAL level 1 to EAL level 7. EAL level 7 means the product is much more rigorously and formally uh, tested all through. So there are different in between levels, I don't think you, you need to memorize all those things. If you understand that, yes, EL7 is the highest, uh, you know, evaluation uh, rating you can get and EL level is the, lit uh, is the lowest one, I think that will help. Okay. Now, what, what is happening is for each and every EL level and for different categories of product, there are certain requirements which are laid out by common criteria and they are called as protection profiles. They are called as protection profile. So let's say you are making a security product and you want to target, let's say EAL3 
you are going to download that protection profile uh, related to EL3 for your product and then the same kind of requirements you are going to implement onto your product. So there's a good way in which you can make sure that you are aligning with the businesses uh, with the industry standard because these EL level and all these kind of requirement are industry requirement. So if you are following a particular standard that means you are becoming more interoperable uh, so that other devices also can seamlessly connect with you they can have integration with with your product and all of it. So this bring in more interoperability end of the day okay. Now what happens is when you have a particular product let's say you are done with a particular product now you are going to to get it tested that time you are going to uh, prepare a documentation called a security target you are going to make a, pro, uh, a particular documentation where you are going to write down about security target it's a documentation in this documentation what you will have is you will say okay this is the requirement number one as per EL level three and this is how our product meets it requirement number two this is how we meet this is requirement number three this is how we meet so this entire security target is nothing but a documentation which actually maps your requirement your product existing uh, controls you have it maps it with the requirement as per the particular target you are having let's say el3 or el4 right and the product itself it is called as target of evaluation the entire product is called as target of evaluation and in many cases let's say i told you right the product can be huge and this entire product might not be in the scope of testing they might call this a small portion as the target of evaluation so you also have to see whenever you want to check something you want to purchase something which is common criteria certified go on to their website download the entire documentation to see what actually is the target of evaluation because a company might claim that my entire product is common criteria certified whereas when you go in detail you will only find a small uh, you know portion of it which is there as part of it so that's how you know it goes through rigorous testing uh, as per a particular requirement and then they are going to release you uh, a rating they are going to accredited you uh, accredit your product for a particular rating please understand this is not for services this is only for products it is only for products so in security we are very concerned about assurance of the product that is where you can actually refer it now let's say once your product has gone has got a rating you wanted how do we maintain it do we need to let's say i am going to release some patch updates and all do i need to again get it recertified because it's a very strict standard the answer is no until the particular modification or a particular patch is not impacting your trusted computing base so what is trusted computing base it is the core part of a system including hardware software middleware or your firmware which actually is responsible for maintaining security almost kind of a of your security kernel right until it touches your security kernel or some kind of changes happens until then you are just going to do some kind of uh, report of uh, some kind of changes and then you can send it to common criteria and your your thing is done but in case you are your tcb is getting impacted your security thing is getting impacted then you need to go again for recertification otherwise this stands for uh, you know some time and periodically only you have to get your product recertified so that's your common criteria i don't think in the cissp exam you need to bother too much about other two security criteria evaluation criteria that is tcsec and itsec but briskly, I will tell about that as well. It should not be a surprise for you. TCSEC was a uh, security evaluation criteria which came in 1974 somewhere. It was brought in by Department of Defense and the focus was only confidentiality. We also call this as a orange book. So they initially released an orange book only for a standalone system, only for confidentiality. And later on, they brought in like 20 different books, which is also called as rainbow table. 
but since this was only for federal systems and all it didn't become widely acceptable by the industry then in europe somewhere they also came up with something called as itsec which is again uh, testing you not only for confidentiality they test you for functionality and assurance both the perspective and there was a different rating they used to provide okay but i don't think that particular topic you should be bothering too much uh, for your CASSP exam but common criteria i advise you you should be uh, knowing this particular topic because that is testable okay so i hope it helps you for your exam right